<laughs> okay. So you really want to know, huh? Fine. I'm going to start by telling you this. And this is important, so listen up. Your entire life, this one and many others, you've been a god who uses its absolute power to make yourself powerless. Entire cultures, especially this one, have all been afraid of their weaknesses, supposedly. When in reality, they've all been afraid of their power. This goes beyond the matrix of reality. This is something much deeper than that. This is eternal. This is fully realizing your consciousness. This is infinite. This is evolution. This is our divine right. Oh, right, all right. Gods and goddesses, as you are coming into your own. I'm really excited. I have an awesome show for you today. I am posted up at my sister's house, and I'm really excited to be speaking with a good friend of mine, uh, Pam Savino, uh, today. And before we get started, I want to show you guys uh, her website and just talk real quick about some of the stuff that I got going on. First of all, I want to thank my good friends at Content Safe. They're amazing. They do such a good job at taking this stuff and reposting it. Uh, they put it all over the place so that I don't have to sit here and upload stuff all the time. I uh, really appreciate that they're willing to do that. Pam is on the show today. And so you're going to be on all, all over the internet as a result of this and uh you know you know on the blockchain you know uh <laughs> so it's never it's never going away but we're just gonna have a casual happy hour uh kind of afternoon uh together but your website looks amazing i uh, really appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with me um you were uh open and willing to have me come on your show and i had a blast so i wanted to make sure that i return the favor and have you uh, on mine. I love what you're doing. It's wonderful. And uh, you, you, uh, you can check out Pam's work at liveauthentically.today. Let's, let's talk about it. Welcome to the show, Pam. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super pumped to be here. Awesome. Well, I'm ecstatic to have you as well. I love what you're working on living authentically. Um, that is really what it's all about, you know, spiritually speaking, it's, uh, you know, at the Oracle of Delphi, Timot Noske, know thyself. And that's what we're all working to do. And it's kind of ironic that we could uh, need some help with that, but we haven't had, in my opinion, a whole lot of steps toward that discovery, uh, you know, most of us at least, uh, through our early development. So I love that you're doing that type of work and uh, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about it and, and what exactly you do. I know you're a coach and I think it's awesome. Uh, we talked about your book. Uh, a little bit uh, last time when I chatted with you. M maybe we can start there just talking about uh, what led you to write a book. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've actually, um, year, it, this actually goes years back. I feel like the seed had been planted long ago and it was on my someday list. Like someday I want to be a published author. And I just kind of kept kicking the can, kicking the can. And, you know, the universe just has an uncanny way of turning our dreams into reality. And so the, the book really became a reality during my divorce process, actually. That's really when um, I just felt the pull to write a book. In fact, that's when I decided to become a coach, you know, what, through doing some deep discernment. And I just felt the pull to share my message to a broader audience. So I decided to formalize my thoughts and the truth that I had learned on my own journey in the form of a book and um, cranked it out in a couple of months. And it was really, it, it was truly the divine. I feel like I'm just, you know, a conduit. I feel like I, I opened myself up to receiving the message that the universe wanted to impart on the world. And I used my personal story and shared it in a raw and real and authentic way to lead from a place of vulnerability. Cause I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna be a coach and ask my clients to step into vulnerability to pave the way for their growth and transformation, I need to do it first, right? So I need to put myself out there in a very raw and real way and share some of my most challenging moments and show how I transmuted pain into power. 
and I named my book Soar because, you know, I believe that once we do the work, we can get to a very lofty place. We can get to a place of soaring. And I believe that this is possible for anyone, regardless of re your reality, even if you feel like you're at rock bottom. I believe that you can employ the laws of the universe and have an open mind and recreate your reality and really design it to look any way you want it to. I think that's great. And I think a lot of people have this experience at rock bottom. I mean, I know that I was at a place where I was pretty distraught and out of options seemingly when I came to some, some conclusions. It was a catalyst for me, at least I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I love that it only took you uh, a couple of months to put this thing together. That sounds very, uh, it sounds like you definitely had quite an experience with that. Uh, you know, some would call it flow or, or, or channeling or what have you. Um, but I think that's really amazing that once you opened up, I've had an experience like that. Actually, the short ebook that I wrote, I woke up one day and I just felt compelled to write some stuff down. And it turned out to be, it's a very short, but a very uh, short ebook. Uh, but I felt like I was inspired. It was inspired writing. It wasn't just uh, something that I had, uh, you know, uh, came up with or something. It was maybe on my someday list too, to do anything like that, like mm -hmm. write a book or even an ebook or whatever, you know, it's so funny sure. how I think we kind of discount ourselves from, from doing stuff. Um, right. But it's interesting too, when, what was the push? So it was something that was on your someday list. You wanted to uh, work on being a coach. Let's talk about that. Actually, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what made you want to work with people in the, in the form of coaching? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. So I've always loved being in the roles of service. You know, I believe that that's why I'm on this earth to serve other people, whether it's my family or where it, whether it's my friends or, and, and I just felt like, I've always felt like I've had this deep connection with the universe. I've always experienced signs and synchronicities and messages and had premonitions. And I always knew that I had this gift and it was something that I started to cultivate and nurture over the years. And um, really, I've spent years doing my soul work prior to going through my divorce. And this was the experience that really um, uncorked my bottle, if you will. The universe said, you know, you've been doing all this work all of these years, and now it's time to share it. Now it's time to, to you know, uncork your bottle and share your message with the world. So I just, the word authentic is the word that kept coming up. It kept bubbling to the surface during my divorce process, because I felt like I was finally living in an authentic place after not living in an authentic place for so many years, but really not even realizing it. You know, we don't realize the weight that we carry until the weight is lifted sometimes. And, and after the rocks started being removed from the wagon, I thought, wow, like I'm feeling actually free and energized and empowered and untethered. And again, authentic was the word that kept bubbling up. Mm. And that's when I named my business. It was like, I tried to think of a couple other names, but I was like, this is where I was just being pulled. Because it really is, you know, we all have this authentic self, this essence, this true core nature of our being. And, you know, stuff gets piled on over the years, fears, doubts, limiting beliefs, the need for external validation, the, you know, the self-talk all that, that doesn't move us forward, et cetera. And we build these walls, you know, we build these walls between us and the essence of who we are. We build these walls between us and other people. And one day we wake up and we feel like, you know, this isn't the life that I want to be living. This life doesn't feel true and authentic to me. So I decided I wanted to dedicate my life to helping other people live authentically. Oh, that's such a good answer. Oh, that's, I, I love that. Yeah, that's spot Thank on. You. And like I, a lot of a, a lot of the work, I mean, again, spiritually knowing ourselves, being authentic, you know, and you taking the lead on that and saying, you know what, I'm going to put uh, my money where my mouth is. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to open up some space and use my story as a, as a part of this and create that, um, that beginning. I think it's, uh, it's a really powerful um, uh, step you know, and, yeah. and to lead by example, I guess is what I mean to say. So I, I want to say, yeah, good. That's great. <laughs> I, love that. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I think we all, you know, I think we all need to open up that space to really be vulnerable to, op to get to know ourselves. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that because that is something that, you know, I don't, I didn't want to put myself out there either. You know, I don't like being vulnerable. It feels like, 
the like the there's a part of me that's just like screaming and crying like the childish part of me maybe is like no or some part of me i don't know what part it is exactly but every time you know i dig deep into that and feel that feeling of oh my god i'm gonna throw up when i post this or you know uh, i don't want to post this i don't want to put this out because it feels so confronting it feels so you know revealing um those are usually nine times out of ten the most powerful uh things that I share are those more intimate, more vulnerable, um, type of, uh, I guess, uh, posts or materials or what have you. Maybe, yeah. we could, maybe we could talk a little bit about that and diving into that vulnerability a little bit. Yeah, I would love to. So yeah, vulnerability. I mean, that's a, it's a scary place to go. At least it was for me from the get go. I want to throw up right now, just talking about it, Pam. <laughs> right? Well, because there's these underlying fears, right? Like, will I be judged? Will I be rejected? Et cetera. And, you know, we're scared to put ourselves out there, but people want, they gravitate towards raw and real. They want to see the human side of us. They don't want to see just the pretty polished side of us, the flawless side. They want to see, you know, the ugly, the messy parts, because that's what authenticity is. It's about integrating and incorporating the light and the dark. And so when people see that, then you become relatable. Then you become someone who they can identify with. And that's what draws people in. You know, oh, wow, she's human. She struggles with the same things. And, and that's what I've, in, I've worked to do more. And I still am. I mean, I'm obviously on this journey. I haven't arrived and I'm not in a position where I'm, I'm simply now sharing knowledge. I'm still on my own journey and growing and learning every day and pushing myself into more vulnerable space. And so sometimes that's sharing just some really bold thoughts and, you know, and is there risk there? Yeah, absolutely. But there, I think there's more risk in not sharing who, who we are. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, when we truly are connected with the universe, we realize that we live in a world, we live in a universe of abundance, right? There's enough of everything to go around for everyone. And that includes people. So the more and more we find our voice and speak our truth and step into our authentic space, that's how we will align with the people who are meant to be on our path, right? And so those statements are supposed to be polarizing. You know, if I drop the F bomb and it offends somebody, well, then they're not one of my, they're not, not meant to be one of my people. Right. And it's not personal, it's vibrational, mm -hmm. right? And so the universe um, capitalizes on those moments in order to align us with the people who we are meant to be with on a vibrational level. And so once we understand that and accept that and realize that it's okay, like we can't please everybody, we can't be friends with everybody, it's, it's okay, it's not personal, it's vibrational. And once we adopt that and accept that and adopt the belief that life is always rigged in our favor, even if it involves a rejection, even if it involves somebody kind of falling out of our lights, et cetera, life is always rigged in our favor. So we accept it and we flow with it. And that's when we learn to really, that's when we really amass a lot of momentum when we accept life and realize that life, you know, we make peace with where we are. And then we put our oars in the water, our boat in the stream, right where we are and move forward and stay out of a place of resistance. I love that. Yeah. I think there's a powerful message there. It's like, no one is for everyone. There's right. plenty, there's plenty of room at the top. No one's for everyone. Not everybody's going to like Jerry Seinfeld, right. In comedy. Right. Some people are going to, not everybody's going to like Richard Pryor. I don't right. know how, but somehow that's the truth. And for me, it feels like almost like this popped into my head. And so forgive me if it's a little bit, um, uh, I don't know, uh, inappropriate, but like, like when we're posting this, like vulnerable, it's almost like we're sharing our inner nude you know, with the world, you know, like a yeah. spicy, a spicy inner image or, or like highlighting something that maybe we're struggling with, or that's not perfect about us. Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some funky things, uh, about how we process and how we are and how we react to the things yeah. in our life. But I think that the more we showcase that the more personal that thing is like the more really universal, I think it often can be, you know, accepting those flaws and exposing them, uh, shining a light and sharing them. Um, so I think that's so important. And in fact, one of, while you were talking about that, that reminded me of one of the um, people I follow on Instagram. So she, her mission is to highlight um, like Instagram, social media filtering and reality. So she'll do these side-by-side -side images of, you know, that involve certain poses and certain lighting and contrast that with like reality, like, Hey, yeah, like real humans have cellulite, right. And, and stretch marks and all that stuff. And, and I think that I love that. I love that people are bringing that into awareness because I think that 
um, you know, we can be disillusioned in thinking that, you know, everybody else's life is perfect. And, you know, and that can really be a barrier for authentic, for authenticity when we are constantly comparing our life with everybody else's highlight reel. So I love the people I do see a big shift into, into more vulnerability, into more authenticity. And I think that's really healthy for humanity at large. I think so too. Yeah. You know, we've had a lot of photoshops and, you know, just ways to filters and ways to, you know, in emphasize the things that look great about us or, or, you know, even just social media itself. It's like, I'm not going to post me on a bad day. You know, right. I'm going to post me on my, you know, whatever, when I'm having a good day or when I have a good quote or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it is, it is interesting, but I think it's also really powerful when people can do something like what you're saying, you know, put the real uh, up against and kind of see the discrepancy there. Cause I mean, if we could look at ourselves, uh, whoever, if there's some sort of creator out there, it certainly has a sense of humor. Um, and I think that there's a lot of things about us that it feels that way and accepting that sense of humor, those perceived flaws, and then they're, they're not necessarily flaws, but we see a lot of them that way. Um, you know, and seeing the humor in that, it can definitely make a huge difference. You know, that, that helps me, like if I can laugh at myself a little bit, laugh at the, you know, absurdness maybe of what I'm going to share, then sometimes that kind of helps to ease me out. What would you say to people who are maybe a little bit uh, hesitant to share and to be openly vulnerable as to kind of maybe inspire them a bit? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, I will, I would like to acknowledge that being vulnerable is hard. So recognizing that it's hard to take a leap of faith out of your space of comfort and familiarity into a space that involves risk. But that is one of the first steps that you can take in order to step into your authentic self. That is one of the layers that we need to shed in order to connect to who we are. And, and I would also say, trust the process, just trust the process, trust the people who have come before you, trust the people who preach vulnerability, even if it's uncomfortable, it's supposed to be uncomfortable because that's of course where growth happens. So just trust the process and also pay attention to how you feel, pay attention to how you feel now, pay attention to, do you feel weighed down? Do you feel encumbered? Do you feel like your voice is being stifled? And pay attention to how you feel after you take a step into vulnerability really check in with yourself and you know, see how you feel physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And I'd be surprised if you told me you didn't feel at least a little bit lighter after taking a step into vulnerability. Yeah, I just feel like I seasick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, whatever it is, you know, you got to use the, the signs that your impulse or intuition kind of prompt you with, right? It's like, yeah. well, yeah. I've this makes me feel exposed. It makes me feel, you know, um, a little bit queasy. Those are the kind of, but I mean, in, as far as growth goes, like that's, that's why I do a uh, standup comedy, for instance, mm -hmm. is because it's not because it's easy. If it was easy, I would just get bored with it and do something else is because mm -hmm. it's a challenge that it makes me sick to my stomach that I still get butterflies and I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when it comes to, you know, expression, and connection with other human beings. I think the same thing is true. We've got to go into those sort of uncomfortable places if we really want to connect. Right. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. wholeheartedly. Yep. Well, since your book kind of, uh, kind of flowed, can you tell us a little bit about that process? I would love to know kind of how did you, uh, did you type it all out? Did you write it down? Did you speak it aloud? And then you know, I'd love to know a little bit about that process. It's something that uh, I'm sure there's quite a few aspiring writers out there. And so often we feel like we're inadequate because of X, Y, Z, or what have you uh, regarding putting something like that out. But um, now is the time where we it, really, we can, we can leverage uh, the technology right now and, and take that and, and use that. So I'd love to know just a little bit about that process, even, even just, um, like how you uh, wrestled with the resistance of writing the book, and then mm -hmm. maybe a little bit about the process of writing, what you may have learned from, from creating a book. I'd love to know. Yeah, thanks for asking. So I really did write my book via a number of different means, a number of different modalities. There were times where I was driving in the car and I would get a download. I would get an intuitive hit and I would just hit record on my phone and I would record a little voice clip and then come back home and transcribe it. 
there were times when I sat down on my island between, you know, the time I had allotted myself between 12 and three that day and experienced, you know, writer's block, like got nothing that day. There were times that I got ideas before I went to bed and I would keep a notepad. So, um, and just jot down notes there. But what I did do though, is I actually gave myself a daily slash weekly quota that I wanted to reach for a word count, because that's another one of those things. Is that if I didn't have accountability, right? If I didn't have certain deadlines, it was it would still be on my someday list. So um, I did have, a, I did work with someone. I had a writing coach who helped me establish those deadlines and it's a different level of accountability when you know that you have to show up and have you know, three chapters to discuss for your meeting at one o'clock on Monday. It's a whole different level than I'll just do it in my free time. Um, the other thing that I learned too was um, just write from the heart. That was like, whenever I'd reach, I'd have a block or you know, I felt like I just was running into a wall. I just, I told myself, you know, just write from the heart. And that's when my best creative content flowed. You know, it's not when I was trying to think about what I should be writing or when I was thinking about how will this be perceived or trying to look at it through the lens of other people. Um, there were times where my ego, I, you know, the, my ego crept in, you know, doubt would creep up and I would literally be writing and I would think, do you even know what you're talking about? Like, and, and that, those were the moments where I experienced growth, you know, it was like, yes, you do. And I have to sit and I have to kind of reconnect and maybe step away for a little bit or go meditate. But <clears throat> those were growth filled moments to the point where, you know, I even experienced so much growth in the, in the book writing process, because again, it's a whole different level when you, you know, your thoughts are swirling in your head, but when you have to put them on paper and think, okay, you're making more conscious decisions about every single word that you're formally documenting, right? So then you think about, well, is this what I mean? Or, or do I mean something else? And there was tremendous growth so much so that in fact, at the very end, my, I was like, oh, I just need one more week. I was telling my writing, I just need one more week, a few more little tweaks here, a few more little, you know, I have to cross a few T's and dot a few more I's there. And he basically told me, his, he was like, just so you know, I'm taking the book on September 5th at 9 a.m. And that is something else I would like to, to talk about a little bit too with any creative pursuit, whether it's writing, I'm sure you know from writing your, your um, comedy content, whether it's painting, no matter what it is, you, know, you have to have an end point, right? Otherwise, there's always a way to fine tune it. There's always a way to sharpen the pencil a little bit more, add a little more color, et cetera. But, you know, I had to come to come and be really honest with myself and come to the truth that, you know, I'm not doing anybody any favors by keeping this book to myself, right? I mean, it doesn't do anybody any good. It doesn't help anybody grow and transform if I don't ever publish it. So I finally had to, uh, you know, just draw the line in the sand and say, okay, put a final stamp on it. And that was actually the hardest moment for me, to be honest. It wasn't the writing because I felt like, I could always add something. I could always change something. It was the fact that like time froze at the time I handed over the book. And so, and, and I don't, I want to draw a little attention too, because again, this is, there's some lag there, right? When we get our creative material out in the world, we're still growing and changing along the way. So it takes time to go through the editing process, through the publication process, recording the audio book. And to be quite honest with you, it was a little anticlimactic by the time I published the book. I thought it would be like this, like, oh my gosh, I've arrived moment, published author, put my feet up, cucumbers on my eyes, like I am done. My life, you know, purpose is accomplished. And there was a little bit of like, meh, like, okay, like what's next? Because this was, I'd been growing and changing all the while. So again, I had to like zoom out many times and remind myself, this is new material for, for someone, you know, this, this one paragraph could be like the reason someone, you know, takes a different path in their life or decides to quit their job and move to the mountains or whatever. And so I had to keep reminding myself that this book has value for some people. And even though I feel like I might have moved on to other realms by the point it was published, you know, I, I had to just keep pushing through. And that's the other message in this is just like persistence, just keep persisting, keep executing, just keep pushing your work out there in the world. I love that. That's such a good message. And I couldn't agree more. Like I used to be a music producer uh, and I, we would make a record and I'd put my heart and soul into it, you know, and then we'd get to the process where we mastered it. Right. It's very, the creative process. It's, you know, I could put a lot of things side by side and you would see a lot of similarities between, you know, the process itself. And I would think, oh yeah, once I finish this one, you know, that's going to be the one or whatever and make me feel yeah. so good. But every single goal, <laughs> 
I reached, it was great to reach the goal, you know, but I still would have that same sense of like, okay, now what? Yeah, I know that feeling of like, well, once I do this, then that's going to sort of, you know, be it, be, be the thing. It'll be over. And, um, and it's, it's not <laughs> really ever over. Um, right. but I, but I love, <laughs> I love that you shared that. Um, can you talk a little bit about what maybe you learned from that, uh, particular experience? Cause like, you know, you put heart, mind, soul, everything into this thing. And, um, and then you, you put it out there and then you're like, okay, now what? So, <laughs> so, so how did you feel? And what did you, um, what did you, what did, where did you shift your focus at that point when you, when you asked that question? Yeah, great question. So I found that during that experience is when one of the universal truths that one of the spiritualists that I, that I listened to preaches, and that is it's by um, Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, best place to be is mostly satisfied where you are, but reaching for more. Love it. And so that was like, that really just kind of drove home and really solidified, crystallized that whole, like, this is okay. Like, this is actually the best place to be. And so if I can accept that, that that should be my permanent state of being mostly satisfied with what I've accomplished. Yes, I'm happy to be this published author. Okay, I just accomplished that. Moving on to the next thing, constantly having my sights set on the next thing. Then we don't have that sense of like emptiness or, oh, I thought I should be feeling this way and I'm not. So, um, so yeah, from there, I just pivoted into coaching. So I started off just coaching. I wasn't sure, you know, obviously I'm still on my journey, just trying to, you know, figure out my own path, my journey. So wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go. Wasn't sure if I wanted to specialize working with people going through a divorce or if I wanted to work with moms, you know, I am, you know, have four kids. And so I have lots of experience through mothering my kids and so many different directions, but I kind of came full circle. I started off my, um, my corporate career in corporate America as a pension benefits consulting actuary. So I'm actually, I may not look like it, but I'm totally a math geek by background. So that's where I ended back up. And I, now I work with fortune 100. I work with like really big companies, executives, CEOs, entrepreneurs, founders, et cetera, to, um, to help them get to this place of alignment. And so that's really what lights me up the most. I do plan on writing other books, but what lights me up the most is like conversations like this, super deep, intellectually stimulating conversations where I can help people get to an authentic place. So um, yeah, yeah, it's a journey. I'm still learning and growing every day and it's, it's fascinating. It's such an amazing journey. Well, that's the work and I love it. I think that's great. And uh, we can unpack maybe a little bit about that too, as far as like helping people find that authentic place, a place of resonance between like emotionality and logic heart and mind. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's a lot of people's work. It's what I kind of do too, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, we all want to, uh, see our most, uh, truest selves. It's the only way to really experience what we're kind of going for. So, mm -hmm. um, I love, uh, that you're doing that type of work and working with, with people in that. I, I would love to hear, you know, just a little bit about, uh, what that might be like and what that might be like on either side, you want, you're welcome to share, you know, what it might be like for you or what it might be like for somebody that you would work with, like, um, you know, uh, and just kind of a general overview and talking about, um, you know, what it's like to, 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 to maybe get somebody to that most authentic self, what, uh, or even, you know, the difference between beginning and, and the sort of end point or that progress point that you're kind of going for, whatever that milestone is. Yeah, thank you for asking. So there's a lot there and I'll try to keep my answer as concise as possible. Yeah, sorry, so, I'm not trying to ask 20 questions at once. Oh, I'm so bad at that. So all bad. good, all good. So let's see, what it's like, I'll start with what it's like for me. It is totally exhilarating to start with a new client. And in fact, it's exhilarating along the way, even after I've been working with someone for a while. But it's like, you know, I get to, it's the analogy that comes to mind is like watching a flower bloom. You know, when I start working with people, like what I see, the imagery that I see is, is a rosebud, right? And over time, I just see that like through nurturing and, and, you know, caring and providing the right environment, et cetera, the flower starts to bloom. And, you know, it's really cool to be able to see that process. It's an honor. It's a privilege to be able to witness that and walk alongside people every single day. And what I do notice most is I notice the energy start to shift. And for me, that's like the most amazing part. I see people starting to realign. I see their, 
divine masculine and divine feminine energy is starting to rebalance. And there's, and that's really exciting for me because most of my clients, all but one, in fact, are um, males. And so they, and that's intentional. You know, I think there's, there's definitely like something to be said for like the energy, the dual energy and the yin and the yang. And, you know, they're alpha male, you know, CEOs, founders, like people say to me, like, I build businesses, like I make like hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, surrender, trust, like that's not in my genetic makeup. Like I wouldn't know how to relax. I wouldn't know how to have patience. And then to that, I say, okay, well then I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to serve it to you straight up. How do you feel that I, that if, if I tell you now that you're leaving a significant portion of your true human potential? untapped, that you're leaving it on the table? What if I told you that I had certain tools and modalities and mental models and routines and lifestyle practices and beliefs, et cetera, that you get to try on, that you get to choose and craft your own new reality to totally unleash you into new realms? And then they're kind of like, oh, okay. You mean you think I could you know, move faster and more purposefully and more intentionally and, um, and experience more peace and ease along the way, and then that's when the curiosity is peaked. So for them, I mean, I, I do they I, I do think for all of my clients, there has to be an element of trusting the process because this is foreign space. You know, for a person who is used to just rolling up their sleeves and just getting their stuff done and plowing through walls, et cetera, it's a very different energy, right? That energy of like constant motion, making stuff happen versus just relaxing and allowing and having patience. And it doesn't mean that we just do nothing. It doesn't mean we become couch potatoes and then wait to win the lottery. That's not what that means. It's not what that means to be in the space of allowing or having patience. It just means to relax. I say to my clients, you know, what I want you to do is just relax into this because it's when we relax that we open up our minds to new possibilities that we open up our lives to new scenarios that we couldn't possibly dream up for ourselves. But we have to have the belief that what we're going to get is at least as good as, if not better, than what we want for ourselves. We have to give the universe the license to be creative. We have to give the universe the license to surprise us. And then when we do that, then we start to recognize our true power. We start to tap into our fullest potential and see how we're all connected. When we connect to that energy source, that's when, that's when we can really unleash ourselves. So it really is such a fascinating process. It is just, it lights me up. I mean, there's so many different directions I've considered going, you know, do I want to do public speaking? You know, do I want to write more books? And where I'm putting my energy right now is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Like I love to just like get in there and totally rewire somebody's psyche. That's great. Yeah. I love that. It sounds like a lot of opening up and really letting go and working mm -hmm. with, you know, outer intention or the intention of the universe or divine will, or we can put all kinds of fancy labels on it. But um, I know exactly what you're talking about. That experience is pretty real to me. Uh, you know, just especially like a couple of years ago where I, I, my mind was blown that uh, where I was able to wind up was mm -hmm. nowhere on my map of like, okay. of, of ha I had no idea that it would even be possible for me, but ultimately I uh, was able to kind of step into some really cool uh, roles and do some things that I didn't think, you know, I had the, I didn't even know existed, frankly. Yeah. Um, and I so, love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Doesn't it feel like magic? It just, it is. yeah. It really, really does. So yeah. I, I love that you're doing that because I think there's a lot of power in that, you know, someone who's, you know, very stringent and determined focus, they use a lot of uh, inner intention, they use a lot of brute force and, you know, and those types of things uh, to get what they want achieved. But it's really amazing to let go, like, and to step yeah. back and relax and open up into, and you, you stop trying to pick up water, and then all of a sudden you, you can fill your handful, you know? So yeah. Yeah. that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I, uh, <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, it you know, is. It's a blast. It is. To work with. That's cool. Well, that's amazing. So, um, so you got your, your book, you're working one-on-one -on -one with folks. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how, uh, if people were interested, they wanted to learn more about working with you and your process, what would be the beginning of that? Would they go to your website or, um, you know, hit you up on a Calendly call or, or what have you? Yeah, the website is really the best place to go. So if you just go to liveauthentically.today, there's a contact me section and I'll, I'll get an email. 
So you can just send me an email, let me know what you're looking for and we can connect from there. Yes, I do. Through that process, we can set up a call. We'll just do a one-on-one -on -one call and I'll find more out about what you're looking for and go from there. That's awesome. All right. I love that. Okay. So anywhere else uh, people can find uh, your work, any other social media sites that you're more active on or anything else that you want to kind of let people know about what you're, what you've got uh, promotionally. Yeah. So I'm on um, LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram a little bit, but LinkedIn and Facebook are my big ones. And I've also got my own podcast out there. It's on Apple podcast, Google podcast, and Spotify. So you can check that out, the Live Authentically show. And my bookstore is on Amazon. So you can find me a couple different places. Well, I'm going to make sure each and every one of those links is available in the description of the show notes for this show. So you guys all out there can go check out Pam's podcast. You can go to her website. You can check out her Instagram, even though she's a little bit more active on Facebook and LinkedIn. And, uh, and go check her out on all those platforms. Again, I will make sure that those are all available for you. I still got to get a little bit more into using LinkedIn. I've been a little bit more active on Facebook lately, but um, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, really cracked the LinkedIn thing yet, but hopefully I, I will hear soon. Maybe I'll be, I'll, I'll friend you up over there. Yeah, I can be your first friend. <laughs> So kind of you and, and incredibly vulnerable for you yeah, to be willing to do I just volunteered something. myself. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> no, I don't mind at all. That'll be great. We can connect. That's, that's wonderful. Well, uh -huh. yep. Yeah, I will definitely make sure all of those uh, links are available for you guys in the show notes. Thank you so much for hanging out and listening today. Uh, Pam, thank you so much for the work that you do because I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I know you're making a much, much bigger difference than we could even understand. So thank you for doing it and being that, um, that type of person serving and, uh, and helping people to, to align. That's just amazing. Thank you so much for your time on the show as well. Thank you so much for having me. All right, everybody. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Go check out all Pam stuff. Peace out.